All right, I'm here to introduce the new LD MOS amp from Palstar. LD MOS amplifier from Palstar. It's a one kilowatt class amplifier. It's not just any amplifier like a lot of them. There's a lot of kit amps out now. The new LD MOS technology was pretty exciting when it came out a few years ago. But it was a long time from um, a commercial manufacturer making them. You see a lot of kit amps out there, a number of them, that uh, use the technology. And they do a nice job. Palstar wanted uh, full FCC certification, real good usability, and uh, they've achieved that. Um, I just bought one a few months ago, a month ago, and the hardest thing I had to do to install it was lift my 77 pound uh, monster off the table to put this thing on. 26 pounds, a full kilowatt or more. Um, it's all automatic, and some nice little features about it is uh, when you turn it on, it comes on usually in standby, and you notice the watt meter scale at the top. It's kind of blurry, you can't see it, but when you're in standby mode, the watt meter is scaled to 140 watts full scale. So you can accurately set the drive level. You should set, should set the drive at about 40 watts to get full output. And then when you go into operate, the watt meter changes its scale to uh, 1400 watts full scale. So you can accurately set it. The, all the time the um, <clears throat> SWR is being displayed as well as the voltage in the power supply, which never wavers no matter what the load is. The temperature of the case of the uh, device, what band you're on and all that. When you turn the thing on, it's RF sensing, you just click the mic, you don't really even have to put audio in it. And it knows what band you're switching to automatically, it doesn't need any interface cables. All you gotta do is hook to the push to talk line and to the RF input line from your exciter, and you're on the air. Nothing to do, nothing to do anything with. Now some unique design features in this that you won't find in the kit amps, you all know that solid state amplifiers are pretty rich in third harmonics. Uh, the kit amps and also the um, commercial offerings out there have nice uh, low pass filters that stop the harmonic energy. But what happens when they do that, the harmonic energy is reflected back into the device, it causes heat and some level of distortion increase. Because it's a wasted energy, it simply goes back into the device. What Palstar has done is design a diplexer for every single band uh, that's forward of the uh, HF, uh, forward of the high pass filter. That reflected energy, instead of going back into the device, gets pushed down into a tune circuit, resonant on the third harmonic on each band, and dumps it into five separate dummy loads that are hidden down underneath the unit. So you get the benefit of uh, less temperature, less distortion, and uh, less heat, more efficiency. The power supply in the thing is not just any garden variety 50 volt power supply that we or somebody built. It's a industrial grade, medical grade power supply. There's no fuses on the back of this unit or circuit breakers. If that power supply gets overloaded or overheats or shorts, it just shuts off. It shuts off for two seconds and then comes back on and says, okay, is everything okay? And then it keeps operating. The app basically operates the same way. Uh, at two and a half to one SWR, it will shut off and go into standby. If you're sit there with your tuning control on your on your amplifier on your uh, antenna tuner, you exceed two and a half, the app just shuts off without releasing the pickle. If you move the tuner back to within two and a half to one, boom, it comes on. No need to reset anything. No turning things on or off. No pushing reset buttons. You notice there's no buttons on the front of the app except that little red one down there on the left. That's a power button. The other one's for software updates. No other buttons. There's three antenna ports on the back, and the antenna will, um, the amplifier will remember which antenna you want for each band. So as soon as you click the mic, it switches the bandpass filter bands, it switches the antenna to the correct antenna port, and if you ever want to change them, all you gotta do is select the antenna you want for the band you're on. If, if tomorrow you wanna run uh, antenna two instead of antenna three, Next time you're on, say, 20 meters, in this case here, you just click the antenna button, switch it to three or two, whatever, and it remembers that, it stays there. So really, there's a lot to look at on this cute little color screen, but there's nothing to do. No tuning, no anything. All you gotta do is make sure you don't run over, uh, you know, 40 to 50 watts drive. Now, I will tell you, we have had one of these come back to the factory, and I hope the gentleman isn't here but he was a kind gentleman. It, uh, all of a sudden he was having problems. Everybody said he's distorted, he sounds terrible, he's, his, uh, he's you know, 20 kilohertz wide. So he sent the amp back to us. Turns out 
he was accidentally running 200 watts of power into the gen into the amplifier with his Kenwood. Forgot to turn the drive down. Well, there's an attenuator in the front end of these devices because they only take about three watts to go to full output. So there's an attenuator in front of it. He blew the attenuator out, so now he was putting the full 200 watts into the LD mouse devices that are in here. Uh, these are very robust. When that app came back, we simply replaced the attenuator. The devices were fine and sent the app back to him, and he was happy as could be. So uh, you, some of you might remember the uh, pictures when uh, Freescale first launched these devices of one of these running, uh, one of these chips running 65 to 1 SWR into a, uh, a full power load and still functioning. It actually set the board on fire, but the chip was still functioning. So they're basically indestructible. Even I can't hurt it. It won't let you do silly things like hot switch, like I tried it once. I'm on the air, I've got the mic keyed, and I tried to switch antennas. I tried to spin, it wouldn't do it. I said, no, I can't do that. So it's very intelligently designed. The whole thing with the power supply, it's all in one box, weighs 26 pounds. So it'll fit in the overhead bin if you want to take it to your vacation home. It's really, um, any questions? And I've got brochures here too. I could go on and on about it, but with 20 okay, seconds. Switch antennas, what's happening? Pardon? Talking about switching antennas. Yeah, there are three antenna ports in the back, so you can tell it to uh, which antenna to, you want to use for each band, and it remembers that. So when you automatically, let's say you switch to 80 meters, you key the mic on 80 meters, it automatically changes to that antenna that you've selected. Yes? Two questions. Does it operate outside the amateur bands, and how much is it? The uh, the price right now at the show is 34 30 Four eighty-five. Um, <clears throat> another niggle about the, the high-pass filter is it will operate outside the amateur bands. It will cover Mars and it will cover CAP. Now, the way that some of these design manufacturers on these amps get away with FCC certification without that diplexer I mentioned is they broaden, they tighten up the pass, pass band, the um, low-pass filter. And then you lose a lot of power, it gets, it gets hot on work and CAP and some of the frequencies that are used in the Canadian provinces and stuff. We've been able to fatten that uh, low pass filter out a little bit to cover work and CAP. And the uh, um, diplexer more than makes up for that. The, uh, uh, for example, on six meters, the third order products are 60 dB down or better. Um, on the other bands, they're in the high 50s, 60s, so it's extremely clean in that regard. Any, yes? One, one more question. Is there any particular reason you have put the update connector and the switch on the front? I well, won't do uh, that. I didn't do the design. However, the programming board is behind a shield of the RF oh. section. It's in the very front, next to the processor in front of the, okay. uh, under the display there. Yeah, it might be a little ugly, but um, you don't, don't expose it to RF and it's, it's 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 just it's the where where it ended up in the port. <laughs> I wondered too, but that's where it is. Uh, one more question. No, no more. We we're out of time. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for uh, asking the questions. And um, Dennis, thank you. Nice, nice new product, isn't it? Excellent.